everybody and welcome back to Spaced Out Radio's Cryptid Tales. My name is Amber Beckard and today we are going to be talking about a very strange disappearance. And don't worry, this does still have to do with UFOs. <laughs> I promise. Today's strange disappearance happened November 23rd of 1953. And if my calculations are correct, the anniversary of this disappearance happens in two days from now. So, let's dive into it. On the evening of November 23rd, 1953, Air Defense Command ground intercept radar operations out of Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, <laughs> not Ontario, Michigan, identified an unusual target near the Solox. An F-89C Scorpion jet from the Kinross Air Force base was scrambled to investigate the radar to investigate the radar return. The Scorpion was piloted by First Lieutenant Moncla as well as Second Lieutenant Robert L. Wilson, acting as the Scorpion's radar operator. Wilson had a difficult time tracking the object on the Scorpion's radar, so the ground operators gave. Moncla directions. Towards the object as he flew, Moncla eventually closed in on the object at about 8,000 feet in altitude. Pretty low if you ask me. Ground control tracked the scorpion and the unidentified object as the two blips on the radar, the two blips on the radar screen glue, grew closer and closer until they seemed to Merge. Assuming that Moncla had flown either under or over the target, ground control anticipated that moments later, the scorpion and the object would again appear as two separate blips. Donald Keyhole reported that there was a fear that the two objects had struck one another, but the single blip continued on its previous course. Attempts were made to contact Moncla and there was no success at all. A search and rescue operation did happen by both the USAF and the RCAF, and it was quickly mounted but failed to find any plane or pilot. Weather conditions were also a hampering on the search. That's it. That is literally it. That is all we know. So let's take a moment and just Think about that. The official USAF account report states that the F the F-89 was sent to investigate a RCAF C-47 Skytrain that was flying off course. So hold on for a second here and let's just put this into perspective here for all of the people like me who have no idea what most of these numbers mean. Um, the U.S. plane was sent to check on a Canadian plane that was flying over the wrong path. Apparently. This is what the report stated. The F-89 was flying at an elevation of 8,000 feet when it merged with the other aircraft, with the other aircraft as it was expected in interception. Its IFF signal also disappeared after the two returns merged on the radar. Although the efforts to contact the crew on the radio were unsuccessful, the pilot of another F-89 sent on the search stated in testimony to the accident that he believed he had heard a brief radio transmission from the pilot 40 minutes after the disappearance. 40 minutes, meaning they were still alive somehow. Now, of course, here comes the fun part. The Air Force stated that they believe that Moncla could have experienced vertigo and crashed into the lake at some point, as they had found that time to time he did suffer from vertigo attacks, stating, and I quote, additional leads uncovered during this later course of investigation indicated that there might be a possibility that lieutenant monclo was subject to attacks of vertigo a little more than normal degrees upon pursuing these leads it was regarded as hearsay upon pursuing these leads it was discovered that statements had been made by former members of lieutenant monclo's organization but were not first-hand evidence and were regarded as hearsay Pilot vertigo is not listed as a cause or possible cause of any of the USAF Accident Investigation Board's findings or conclusions. 
So first off, cover up number two out of the entire situation. The official accident report states that it is that when the unknown return was picked up on the radar, it was believed to be an RCA of aircraft, VC-9112, but it was classified as unknown because of its flight plan, because it was off its flight plan course by about 30 minutes. This assertion was emphatically denied by the pilot of that particular flight, and uh, well, that just shot down choice number three. There was another report to Donald Kehoe, who was a UFO investigator that night when he got a phone call telling him that a rumor out at Selfridge Field that an F-89 from Kinross was hit by a flying saucer. That's what it said. A follow-up telephone call with the U.S. Air Force then stated that it was actually a Canadian DC-3, a completely third different plane, also blaming us for it again, that was in its wrong position flying over the locks between Sault Ste. Marie on the US-Canada border. So what this concludes down to is A, we have a missing aircraft with two people aboard from the US Air Force. The UFO apparently does not exist, and it has now been three different Canadian planes in three different reports, all of which have been denied and proven denied. So what happened? Where did they go? Nobody knows. It literally is a complete mystery to this day. Absolutely nobody knows what happened to those two gentlemen. Of course, this then fueled a lot of conspiracy theories. Later on being that in 2006, there was a Great Lakes Dive Company hoax. Eh, the long story short, because there is a lot to go into with it and it's just way too much on my brain and I won't go with everything on you guys at all. Um, Basically was that there was a diving company who was going through Lake Superior and found what they believed were remains of this missing 1953 plane. Um, over the next few years, they determined through time and time again that it was nothing but a simple hoax trying to grab fame, glory, and that there was no way with a fish finder they could have found this piece of plane. Um, therefore, it was just stated as a hoax and to this very day here in 2020, we still have no idea what happened to Felix or Robert. So I urge all of you on November 23rd to send a little message out to Felix and Robert wherever they may be and maybe ask them for a sign and see if somebody can tell us where they are. Maybe they're still alive, as right now they are literally only presumed dead. If you check out their Wikipedia pages, it says presumed dead. They still don't know. And until they find bodies or they find them, we will never know what happened to them on that fateful day. Now, there were a potential of parts found in 1968. Um, there were aircrafts parts found on the eastern shore of Lake Superior in October of 1968 um, that they think were from the F-89. Um, U.S. Air Force actually confirmed that they were pieces of military aircraft, but they could possibly be from the missing F-89 plane, but there was no definitive answer that it was that exact plane at that time. That comes to my question. What do you guys think happened to Felix and Robert and where do you think they are now? Were they sucked into a time warp void type of thing and taken to outer space and are now living it up with the, uh, with the aliens and flying UFOs of their own? Or did something tragic happen that very, very fateful day and we will never know what? Let me know down below in the comments and I cannot wait to read your answers. That being said, thank you to Ron Bumblefoot Bell for all of our amazing otherworldly music here on Spaced Out Radio. I can't thank you enough for providing us with the soundtrack. Don't forget to follow our social media, mine as well as Spaced Out Radio's, and 
I will catch you in our final episode of this season next week. Bye guys. <laughs>